Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions on live via Facebook. Today I've got with me Lee Ram, Hirschkorn and Barkas Patty. How you doing? Doing good, thank you. Okay, so first things first, yesterday, breaking news wasn't breaking news per se. So we have to take ownership of this. So we're jumping on this live now to go through what the steps were and basically what happened. So from my point of view, what happened, you know, Lee Ryan and I had a chat prior to having that chat. We see Casey had posted uh, in his group and then Barkas is here on the call as well, posted in his group. And then obviously me and Lee Ryan started having a chat about it. And then since like yesterday and today, people have been posting in the groups that um, that this information has been around for a while, which we knew was had been around for a while to the point of the the only bit that we were unsure about is, was it updated information from Merchant Fulfilled? I've since checked in with um, Ivelin Demerov, and he tracks all the terms of service. And so from his tracking from the technology, he hasn't seen any changes to that page. So Lee Ran and Barkas, I'll hand over to you to get your points on it as well. Yeah, so so if in fact what, uh, so I think I've heard from maybe from two different sources that Amazon, um, you know, when they, when the seller got suspended, Amazon also pointed them to this velocity review page. And that's, you know, kind of how this uh, conversation started yesterday. And, you know, in my mind, it's possible that it, that a, because this seems to be happening to new accounts getting suspended. Yeah. And so in my mind, it's possible that new accounts suddenly have a surge in sales. They go under a velocity review. Amazon sees a bunch of 90% off discount codes and are, you know, suspending the, the seller for misuse of, of uh, sales rank. Whereas existing sellers who are already doing some volume, it's not really affecting them. Yeah. Um, Somebody just posted in uh, in Manny's group, the High Rollers group, um, that they got suspended. Um, they ran a, a 90% off um, Zon jump in, in March um, and they got suspended. And the question I asked them was, um, do you have a, is your account new? And they said, yes, they opened the account in January and they ran the promo in March. So um, it seems to me that the suspensions are happening to newer accounts and it could be because of a velocity change. Boxes. Uh, that's that's exactly my theory. So um, we we had a client that uh, that got suspended and he got reinstated and he got suspended again and uh, it was it was for a couple of other things. Um, it, 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 he was essentially using multiple launch services and if you ask any launch service, we nobody would say, hey, yeah, it's okay to use five of them at the same time. But anyway, I digress. Um, he said he had a conversation the second time around. He was able to talk to somebody. Um, and they said that the sales velocity was a trigger, uh, that led to the suspension again. That's where I, where I shared the information and, uh, and I went back and edited my post and, and because it, it was kind of misleading. I didn't mean for this to be like a, uh, that the, the post was new, that the article has obviously been around for a while, for several years. And, but, uh, I went there and edited it, that my theory is like with Liron, that it seems to me that. Every account that I've seen that has been suspended has been less than six months old. Yeah. Um, and, and, it, and it could be that Amazon has just changed the rules and hasn't told anybody about, and they're just kind of famous for that. So uh, that's why I wanted to share it. Uh, but yeah, it just seems like it, it seems like it's very possible uh, that this could be a flag that raises the eyebrows of Amazon. So. Cool. Levan, do you want to add anything here? Um, yeah, I mean, the other, the, the, the only other thing that I've also heard is that, you know, it, it could be related to the quality of buyers. Um, and you know, when you have people that are, um, sort of low quality buyers that are just like buying products only at a discount and reselling them on, on Amazon, um, that, that, that could be a part of it. And so if you don't do 90% off, if you do, you know, 60% off, you're probably not going to have those buyers who are buying to resell on your listing because they can't really, they can't make as much of a profit by undercutting your price um, and selling fast. And so that's, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be running 90% off promos at this point. If I, if I were to do any discounted sales, 
um, I would do, you know, 60%, 65%. Um, the other side of it is that, you know, there are other methods utilizing PPC, utilizing, um, uh, you know, backend rebates. There's other methods that um, won't necessarily trigger, uh, maybe trigger suspension. So you, you might, you might want to utilize, you definitely don't want to utilize 90% off codes, I think, at this point. Cool. Marcus, do you want to, before we switch subjects, do you have anything you want to add towards the end? Yeah, well, just to kind of touch on what, what Liran said, Liran said um, well, yeah, we, so we capped our discounts to 89% off. Uh, we might go up higher, um, and uh, we, we think that's the threshold and uh, of 90% off plus, which, uh, you know, Liran was talking about the quality of customers. We know that Amazon, just as much as they track seller activity, they track buyer activity. They track buyers, you know, is the ratio of, the discounted purchases versus organic purchases. They track how many cards you have uploaded. They track if these are gift cards, they track if you're only leaving positive reviews for these discounted purchases, you know, so they track a lot of these things. So we know that, um, uh, they're, they're, I don't know personally, I, I professionally, I don't know if there is a, um, a distinction in, in a quality, a low quality buyer that hurts a seller. I don't know that. I, I know that there's a lot of information out there and I'm not going to say anybody's wrong. I, I just don't know if that is the case, but we do know that Amazon tracks all those metrics and we know that Amazon is certainly capable of enforcing that if that is, if that is the case. So, yeah. so the, the thing I wanted to mention as well, I don't know the name of the gentleman, but I watched a video this morning, which Anthony Lee shared. It's a video from Zontracker. And one of their data, data um, science team broke down, it's like an 18 minute video, proper geek out, but it was breaking down how the, the data points are put together. So it was shown like they referenced mine and Anthony's videos, Lee Rand's videos and other videos about the talks that's happened, but they've done it from a data science perspective. I'll get Anthony to share the link and if I can find it, I'll post it to the comments here. But that's a fascinating video to have a have a read through, not a read through, but have a listen through, and get other different perspectives because they're they're talking about all of these disparate uh, disparate data points that come together and how they work together and what these triggers and where the velocities come from and those kind of things and they've been reverse engineering that so it's more of a, a high level technical approach to thing, uh, but it's a good way to take a look nevertheless. So I will share that. Again, I want to apologize for the non-breaking news that turns into not being breaking news. I should have done a bit more due diligence before, but I still, uh, I'll stand corrected. But one thing I will stand by is that my goal and our goal is always to put out the best, the freshest content as quick as possible. And there are going to be times we'll get it wrong and I got it wrong and I'm happy to eat that and own it fully. Um, but changing subjects on a more positive note as well. I um, I was in Amazon three times in the UK last week. So I went to, um, there was this, uh, the meetup that they reached out to various different sellers and uh, service providers. And it, the mobile team from the Cali office flew over. So there's five or six of those. And so we've done some workshops on improvements uh, upcoming on the mobile um on the mobile device. So there's some new features coming for that. I I can't go into graphic detail, but one of the features I requested was on the mobile app is to have a a dashboard. So on that dashboard, you're able to build your own interface because what happens is there's a lot of different types of sellers on Amazon from, you know, private labelers to wholesalers and stuff like that that want different metrics. I've also asked them to correct the fact that you can see your last 30 days in terms of your sales, but you can't see your last 30 days of PPC. But it's very interesting from those two meetings, which were workshops, and then I'd done a one, I'd done a group meeting with them. There was five or six in the room, and we were talking about all the different things that's happening on Amazon, things about reviews, talking about giveaways and all those kinds of stuff, um, which they couldn't fully uh, obviously answer, and I didn't push too hard with it. But it was, I got some decent insights, nevertheless, and there's some good stuff uh, coming. So, Lee Ren, have you been into Amazon recently? You, you've done a run of that as well, haven't you? 
Um, I actually just got a date. I think sometime in August I may be going there. Um, so I haven't been there this year at all, but I think I will be there um, later later this summer. I got an invite to a, a brand cafe that they're that they're doing. Um, but you know, you mentioned mobile, and one thing I noticed recently is that um, uh, sponsored brand ads on mobile seem to now be showing the image of the product, and they're they're sort of better. Um, you know, they would show the logo there unless you changed your logo image and they were kind of off and they seem to have fixed that. Hmm. Uh, I've just noticed like in the last week or two. Um, so that's actually good for um, talking about mobile optimization, uh, Amazon making changes to the sponsored brand ads on mobile. Um, and then just, just to add to that, one thing I noticed yesterday was the ability to add negative keywords hmm. in sponsored brand campaigns, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, Amazon's still not giving you the search term report uh, for phrase and broad, but you could take your negative keywords from your, you know, auto and, and manual um, regular sponsored product campaigns and yeah. plug those in if you wanted to, um, to try to optimize your, um, your um, sponsored brand campaign. So um, hopefully search term report is coming soon also. Yeah, cool. And there'll be an announcement for Friday the 17th. I won't share what it is just yet, but um yeah, hopefully announcements will come Monday, which is going to be pretty good as well. Barkus, any uh, new stuff you want to share? Um, no, nothing really. Uh, I mean, oh, I do want to mention this, and cool. you guys have been around long enough to see algorithm changes, and then yeah. the fear goes through the roof. Um, and it, it seems like us as a community, and and I'm and I'm grateful to be, uh, you know, in in the the, the cool kids club. But uh, it seems that every algorithm change, it seems like a lot of people, not just me, but a lot of people in the community are coming together to share information, mm -hmm. to get this information out as a collective source. Yeah. And I think it's very valuable because like we all know that Amazon will make changes and they don't necessarily mention it. And it seems like they'll release a TOS update later. Maybe there's something coming up this summer. Yeah. That's some opinions. But I, I just want to say thank you to both. There's a ton of other people that have been involved in this that in the community of, of people that are in services or tools. Um, it, it just seemed like I mean, within a matter of a week, we kind of figured out what was going on and we're still learning. But, you know, like 2018, August 2018, there was a big algorithm change. And it took, it took, all, you know, it took, a, it took a while, I would say about six weeks for everybody to really figure out what happened. So I would just encourage everybody to, to, to keep doing what we're doing, share information to get it out and because I mean, even if we make a mistake, we make a mistake, but we own yeah. it. So. Exactly. You've got to own it. The other thing I, I think as well is what I've seen a trend happening over the last couple of years. And that's been that everything used to be behind a paywall. You'd get these three favorite tricks and then you'd have to take the course or join the mastermind. It seems now that it's heating up in the sense is everyone's looking to break the best content and the most up to date content first. So we've had a, a complete step change, which can only benefit the community because in, in the event of everyone trying to rush out and give you all this great information, you think two years ago, people didn't used to do that. There was very few would be brutally open and like what we are today. So the, the industry has changed from my point of view, which I think is a great thing. It may have dumbed down the setting. Join, join the link below for our, for our new mastermind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. $2,000. <laughs> Yeah, two thousand dollars, and we'll do it on a on a desert island somewhere. But no, right. in all seriousness, now I don't think people can get away with putting out shitty podcasts or anything anymore. You know, them days are gone. So anyone right. who's launching content now has to be of a standard. And what I've noticed as well is getting more and more technical, and you're getting more of the data science teams appearing on podcasts now. And I think that's great because they're going from the back room to the front room because for right. me, they're the guys are ahead of you and I because right. they're right on the, the cold face of technology. Right. So yeah. you've got your Evelyn Demarovs and like my partner in who, um, who does a, a lot of stuff for jungle scout algorithm work and stuff. A lot of these discoveries wouldn't be possible without Barkus and his team. 
and uh, Anthony going back to the engineering team to pull this out. It's the same as Casey. Look at his podcast. It's called Follow the Data. Where does that information come from? It comes from the data science team. And, and more and more, we're getting more advanced level information that's getting out to the co community for free. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the amount of, I mean, since I started doing this like late 14, 2015, I mean, it's been massive change in software and data and what's, what's available to sellers, you know, um, makes it, uh, you know, makes it much easier to make, to make decisions. Um, you know, when you're, when you're really looking at data and, um, make, making your, you know, with Amazon, I think it's all about data driven decisions and, uh, we've come a long way, uh, you know, with uh, companies like, you know, Helium and uh, Six Leaf and Fire Launch out there just uh, continuing to, uh, to add tools. Yeah, sounds good. Right, guys, are you ready to sign off, yeah? Ready. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. We'll be back. See you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.